Hi, my name is Jamin Ferguson. I'm a developer advocate at PayPal. In a recent video, I showed you how to retrieve the access token needed to authenticate calls to the PayPal REST API. In this video, we'll use that access token to make two calls to the orders API, one to create an order and another to capture the payment associated with that order. Documentation for all of the APIs referenced in this video can be found in our developer docs under REST APIs, API collections, current, and orders. In the access token video, I had a file called server.js that showed two different ways to retrieve the access token. I've copied over one of those functions into a new file called paypal.js. This file is gonna be the main interface between our app and the PayPal REST API. You can see here that I've imported the node fetch library, as well as everything needed to load the environment variables I use. One small difference between the server.js version and my version of generate access token is that I'm here I'm returning only the access token itself and not all the data that came back from the server. We're gonna add two new async functions to this file. First, one called create order and another called capture payment, which is gonna take in an order ID. I'm actually gonna complete the capture payment method first because it's a little bit simpler. The first thing I need to do is grab the access token. So I'll type const access token equals await generate access token. And then I'll type const URL equals template literal string base slash v2 slash checkout slash orders slash, and then we'll put in the order ID slash capture. Now, looks like I forgot to pull in base. So I'll pull that here from server.js. Now I'm gonna type const response equals await fetch, pass in the URL, and then for our options object, we're gonna tell it that we're gonna post to that URL. And for headers, first content dash type application slash JSON. And we're also gonna need an authorization header. And this will take template literal where we'll say the string bearer, and then paste in our access token. And if we wanna look at the response, we'll say const data equals await response.json. I'll log out the data and finally return it. So that's our capture payment method. The key thing I want you to take away from this is how we pass in the access token in the authorization header to, in order to authenticate our API call. Let's do create order next. For that, I'm just gonna copy in what I've done here because it's a very similar setup. We just need a few more details. First, we'll update the URL. For this one, we just need to post to v2 checkout slash orders and get rid of that extra stuff. And then in addition to method and headers, we're gonna add a body property. Because the body is always a string, we can call json.stringify and then pass in an object here. And here we'll say our intent is to capture a payment. And then we pass in something called purchase units. Purchase units is an array that includes all the things that we are buying. So for now, We'll just put in one thing. It's gonna take an amount, the currency code of US dollars, and a value, which is a string of $100. So this is gonna create an order where someone is buying one thing for $100. Now, normally you're gonna have your products stored in a database somewhere and you'd key the price off a product ID or a shopping cart ID instead of hard coding it here. So with these two methods, create order and capture payment, we now have everything we need to complete a PayPal transaction from the server side. To confirm that all these things work as expected, I've created a file called test.js, which imports the new PayPal library I created, calls paypal.createOrder, and then captures the payment associated with that order ID. Let's see what happens if I try to run this in the terminal. Type node test.js. First, we see that the order was indeed created. And down at the bottom here, you'll see for the capture log, order not approved. And it simply says that the payer has not yet approved the order for the payment, which makes sense. Just because we created an order and captured the payment of the order, we haven't yet hooked it up to a website where the user can approve it. We'll do that in the next video.